Andrew Shore on location at the American Society of Hematology meeting in New Orleans as we're hearing in the first symposium about what's on the leading edge for lymphoma and also some leukemias and maybe even multiple myeloma, vaccines, radioimmunotherapy. We ask questions of the experts. So um, it's clear that uh, I think there's now a consensus that vaccines and immunotherapies for hematologic malignancies um, have a very strong therapeutic potential. Um, it's also clear that it takes longer than you would think once you have that clarity of the demonstration of proof of concept to actually get something uh, FDA approved. Um, and in the case of Dendrion for the prostate cancer vaccine, that, that it looks very optimistic that it will be FDA approved next year. Um, in 2010. That's been over a 10-year set of studies that uh, Dendrion has done to, to finally get to the threshold of FDA approval. So in the, in the area of hematologic malignancies, uh, there are already very strong uh, vaccine results in patients with follicular lymphomas. Uh, and those um, are really moving now into second stage vaccines. And I think um, that, that it's likely that uh, um, there will be uh, vaccines FDA approved for lymphoma probably first as, as far as uh, FDA approved therapies. But there are also cell-based therapies now which are a form of active immunotherapy rather than a vaccine, which is called in scientific terms a uh, passive immunotherapy. So cell-based therapies are more like a transfusion and, and there the patient themselves can uh, uh, give blood in a, in a way very much like a blood transfusion, but then the blood is, can be engineered in the laboratory and then given back later to the patient as, as a transfusion. And then that way uh, it works in a way as an instant vaccine. So vaccines have a problem in patients that it takes several months for them to work. And so if you have someone who has a tumor that's progressing, um, you don't have time usually for a vaccine to take hold and to work. So the cell-based therapies have, have the ability to get rid of this time lag problem because you don't have to do the priming and boosting. As many people know, uh, when you first get vaccinated, you have to bring your children in and they have to get revaccinated over the years to really have a, a protective effect. So the cell-based therapies have a big promise to be able to get around that uh, roadblock. So we have uh, um, an active program at the Abramson Cancer Center for cell-based therapy trials. At this point, we have, a, we have protocols open for lymphoma, uh, for patients with leukemia, and for patients uh, who have uh, a reason to go under an allogeneic marrow transplant. And, and our most active protocol right now is one for uh, the so-called non-myoblative allogeneic transplant. And we're incorporating the cell-based vaccines into that procedure. So the, the field, I think, is at uh, the scientific tipping point now to where, going, uh, where we now have enough scientific knowledge and, and the approach of how, how to do these trials and, 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 and what the, the real uh, roadblocks have been. Those have been solved, I think. We have new technologies that are just now entering trials that we heard about today. And, and so I think um, the, the enthusiasm is that in, uh, late stage trials will begin within five years. So late stage trials means randomized trials that then, when the results of those are available, can then lead to FDA licensure. So um, given different diseases, some of them progress rapidly and so then you can show that it works more rapidly. For liquid lymphoma, it takes several years to show that it works. So those the trial starts in five years, it's gonna be another five years to the results of that will be known. So I think we'll have FDA approved drugs from these cell-based therapies within the next decade.